trying to make this as interesting as possible. So I was asked to come and talk a little bit about digital, you know, digital transformation and disruption and how Avaya fits into play. So what I want to walk you guys through is my vision of what's going on in terms of engagement and how APIs and the API economy combined with what this, and I, the theme was all, all the last two days, right? It's APIs and apps as a service that is really delivering agility into the business community and where you can actually transform your business and deal with what's happening, which is this digital disruption. But a little background on myself. Um, I was part of an acquisition of Avaya. Uh, we were a small software company based out of Canada and all we focused on was cloud and cloud user experiences across any type of collaboration service. So I've got a picture of my dog, Ben, and why I do that, he is my co-author. So whenever I write up a presentation or do a document, he sits by my foot and lets me know when it's time to feed him, take him to the washroom, so he gives me good breaks. So I always wanna give him credit to the content that I create in these presentations. Anyway, so my background is in cloud, it's in mobility, and uh, when we got acquired by Avaya, what they did was they took our group and allowed us to incubate. And this is important because I heard this in other presentations. They allowed us to incubate as a separate company. Think of us as a startup within Avaya to incubate this cloud strategy. And as we incubated it, we needed the agility and sort of the breadth of our own sort of uh, roadmap to really incubate the concept of cloud native. So everything that we did was cloud native, not cloud first, cloud native engineering to look at the market where it was going and to address it through this sort of next generation of collaboration services. And that story will be told here, right? It's all about providing organizations, individuals, the ability to sort of build at cloud speed, the agility to execute, modify, and execute again at cloud speed. And that's being delivered, right, through this concept of the API economy. And why is the API economy so popular? Because of the whole dynamics of this consumption e economics that's transforming the way business operates and it consumes technology. So, apps and APIs at cloud speed, and it all starts with this concept of disruption. So I always talk about this as my first slide, disruption ahead. The reality of it is it's not ahead, it's here. Disruption is here today and it's affecting every industry. There is not an industry that is not affected by disruption. I'll give you a good story. On the plane here, I watched a movie. You ever heard, seen the movie Mule? Anyone seen that with Clint Eastwood? So the story is about a horticult horticulturist who is in the flower business, who ends up running, he becomes a mule, he runs drugs for money. You know why? Because his flower business got disrupted with online sales of flowers. So think about the concept, a florist, a horticulturist, that's the most manual labor gets disrupted by technology, right? So disruption ahead, it's not ahead, it's here today. And that disruption is absolutely driven by rapid innovation. We live, People in this, period, in this room, we live in a period where innovation has never been at such a rapid pace as it ever has been. So if you think about the technology you consumed five years ago to what you consume today, and it's night and day. Even if you look back two years ago, technology that's in, we use every day to communicate never existed or was just in its infancy two years ago. So this rapid change in technology, like think about last year we were here, we were talking about AI. Now AI is almost at the core of everything we use from turning on lights, listening to music, buying products. AI is, it's not coming, it's already here. So this rapid innovation is something that's absolutely driving transformation across all these business segments. And it's not isolated. I used to do talks 10 years ago and they said, well, it's in the US, it's in the US. That's bullshit. It's not in the US. It's across the world. It's around the globe. In fact, in other markets, it's moving quicker because it can transform their markets to catch up to speed to other markets. So this digital transformation is affecting digital economies. Think about currency. What, today, what was today's announcement? Facebook is releasing digital currency. So even not just transactions, but the value of the transactions are being affected by this digital transformation. So I always say to people, this is not about thinking about it. I don't want to scare you. It's about it's here and it's about how you execute it. Are you going to execute it? Are you going to transform? So this is where this comes important. The status quo, 
The idea of saying, that's great, it's good technology, I love it, but not for me, not yet. My customers, they don't buy that way. No, status quo is not a growth strategy. The status quo is a retention strategy that's inevitably gonna decline. So if your mandate or your goal is to grow your business or you're in an industry that's targeting growth, change is inevitable. You have to look at what you can do to meet those requirements. This, I love this slide. We, we talk about this all the time uh, in North America. So if you look at, the, since the year 2000, 52% of the companies in the Fortune 500 have either gone bankrupt, they've been acquired, and typically when they're acquired, they're acquired pennies on the dollar, or they cease to exist. Think about a company, Kodak, massive, massive innovation, stagnant, 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 bankrupt. Now they've had to reinvent themselves around what? Digital currency, right? So reality of it is if it can affect large enterprises with large tentacles in global reach, it can affect any business anywhere. Change is a requirement to meet changing demands of what? Customers and the way the customers interact. Right, so they say here, by the year 2018, more than 50% of business commerce sites will integrate technologies from more than 15 vendors to deliver digital customer experience. So again, when I talk Avaya, everyone thinks, oh, your contact center, oh, your UC. Well, that means nothing to me. What, what's important to me is engagement, is how you engage employees and how you engage customers. We're in the technology of providing solutions around engagement. And we cannot be the only vendor. If you were in uh, the panel I was on yesterday, the key point of it is this only succeeds if vendors learn to partner with other vendors. It only becomes a bigger piece with an open environment that allows us to grow in scope. So this is inevitable, right? You can't have one provider give you everything. One provider might give you a good digital transaction technology from the cloud, but you need another one for customer experience. You need another one for post customer experience. The beauty of cloud and digital transformation is you can pick and choose the technology and consume what you need. That's a huge issue. 10 years ago, if I wanted to embark on a strategy around digital engagement with my customer, I'd actually have to pick one vendor who'd massive, come up with a project that might take five years to implement in my infrastructure, in my data center, and then when I deployed it, it was already, out of, it was already basically obsolete. No company, even though we have to change, no company can afford to actually buy technology, right? The key is we need to look at consuming technology and consuming it as a service because that gives us agility and choice because our customers, the way they interact with us based on rapid innovation, the way they prefer to interact with you changes on a yearly basis, even on a monthly basis. So the only way for us as a business to support that is the ability to consume technology in an agile format. I like this one. People will come back and say, oh, you know, my customers like this. My MPI score is really, really high, really, really high. I know this sounds sort of odd, but you can't just say, I'm going to do what my customer tells me. It's broader. You have to look at what your customer is engaged in and how you can provide a better service. This is from, uh, I don't know if everyone's ever seen this famous quote from uh, Henry Ford, right? If I'd asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses, right? Old mindset, old technology, I just want to go faster. So it's, that's good, to, you need to understand that, right? It's, a, it's about <coughs> new mindset, new ways, how do I innovate to deliver that faster service? So Ford's one of those early, you know, he's a pioneer there. He innovated the concept of faster by providing an automobile versus a horse, right? So I, I always bring this up. It's not just about technology, right? It is a mindset. All this digital transformation, the way we address it is more than technology. It's a mindset. If I take new technology and I attach it to an old way of thinking or an old business model, I guarantee you that's failure. You will fail, right? All the technology in the world will not solve problems. It's about new technology, but more importantly, new thinking. That will drive massive innovation, which will guarantee success. So that's the critical question. Are we ready to take a new mindset on how we engage with our customers? Because if we're not, 
All the innovation, all the automation will go nowhere. It'll be stuck in an old business process that will only make things worse. I know change is difficult, right? But not changing is fatal. That reflects the slide before. Change is something that we have to accept and embrace. So if we look at digital transformation, that is absolutely driving innovation and change, right? When I say digital transformation, it's not the way you interact with your users, it's the way your users are demanding that you interact with them, right? So think about it, we've got three, I'll call it generations in the core business, right? Everyone talks about millennials. Well, millennials have an interesting endpoint because they were born with the internet. So my age group, which is before that, if any of us are like 45 or older, right? We were born, there was no internet. So we learned the internet. Millennials, they were born with the internet. But guess what? They weren't born with that mobile connectivity. If you look at the generation below them, which is not babies, these are like teens moving into 20s, which is this generation Z, they were born, they don't know a world without mobile connectivity, without smartphones. So that way of engagement is constantly changing and has different interactions for different generations that are, are center in this whole business segment. So being able to understand, that's the digital transformation, right? This is gonna drive innovative ways on how we interact and how we do business. Absolutely. Anyone familiar with Shopify? That business is growing leaps and bounds because they make it easy for us to address that problem and that issue, All right? So when we get into the communications as a service, how do we layer into that easy user experience to make it simple? I like the idea of removing friction. I know they said don't always remove friction, but removing friction to engage with us so we can be successful and build relationships like we did in the old days when we'd go out for coffee and have meetings. Now we have to digitally create relationships this way. So this digital transformation is forcing us to, to, to drive innovation and change in the business. When we transform, that has to equal innovation, right? Smart companies don't get scared of disruption. They're not scared of what this is. They harness it, they use innovation to address it and make their business bigger and stronger and more scalable. And the beauty of this is, if your mindset is about harnessing it, the technology there will allow you to address it. I guess I'm gonna move quicker because he's already saying <laughs> I just started. Digital mindset, digital mindset, right? This is where I said change, this is where your businesses have to be. A digital experience, and this is key. You have to be comfortable with rapid change, right? You have to be comfortable with failing. Rapid change, experimenting, getting feedback, and executing over and over again. Your whole mindset is outcomes oriented, so it's not by buying technology and buying acronyms and using platforms is, what's the end state? This is the end state. Better engagement, better engagement, stickier engagement, stronger relationship. And the beauty of cloud and that digital mindset is, don't be afraid to execute trial over and over again. Agility is the main theme. Agility is the requirement for that, uh, I'll call it that mindset. So. That agility, I, I coined it the agile business mindset. Execute, modify, and execute. That is what you need to do. You have to have, I'll call it the cojones to harness that, build teams that embrace that, and then execute it. So what's the compelling, so when you think about agility and this whole idea of the agility mindset, this is why the API economy has, is, is taking off and why it's so appealing, right? There's a functional benefit. I can build a UX and a UI for en engagement that customize to meet my customer needs. And actually I can customize it to different segments from employees to customers to suppliers. So this API economy allows me to address this and allows me to have that reiteration where I can go over and over. The economic benefit is based on cloud consumption. There's absolutely no risk because I could start today, let's say with a Twilio, because it's open REST APIs, I can move to Avaya, and I can move to other vendors, for example, if I want to add services. So there's no risk. API economy gives me, it takes the risk out of the consumer, and it actually eliminates the risk for the innovation, because it's based on open architecture that allows me to consume what I need, when I need it. 
And then there's that emotional benefit. By being able to say, you know, typically when you look at cloud in particular, it's black and white, one size fits all. That's really what cloud is. What CPaaS and APIs provide is, no, no, no. You've got that one cloud, that one size fits all in terms of infrastructure, but now you have infinite amount of customization. That allows, again, an emotional benefit. By building that customized user experience, it's gonna provide you the agility and rapid change to meet the rapid evolutions and needs uh, of your customers. So it's all about market execution. So I'm gonna, because I've got time constraints, I know you guys all understand the API economy, so I don't need to give you a, a dissertation on the API economy and where it's gone. Basically, you know, there's three silos I see, public, private, and partner APIs. These are festering and growing everywhere. I think the public and partner APIs are very strategic and you're seeing people embrace it. There are the pioneers in the space that basically built the whole back end of that ecosystem and partner ecosystem was built on exposing APIs and getting more and more people involved in what they were trying to release. And then you've got that emerged companies that all they did was APIs. So Twilio's, the MuleSofts, right? Hey, I get that, I'll, I am, I'm, my only business model is just APIs. And then you've got this phase three. And Avaya's were in this phase three is, hey, APIs, their stake, you, if you have a solution or product that doesn't have APIs, you're dead in the water. Your market, your whole go-to-market cloud has to be based on not just core services, but core services that wrap APIs around it. So you see that with Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and ourselves. Yes, we're releasing products, but there's never a product release without open REST APIs or open APIs, right? Because we know as vendors, even the big vendors, we can't innovate fast enough. We can innovate and provide great services, but we need partners and customers to do that innovation for us, whether it's vertical or horizontal. For us to really escalate and scale out innovation, we need to open it out to a community. So this has become the new thing. APIs are a staple offering in any cloud service, and if it's not there, buyer beware. Don't subscribe to a cloud that is closed. Don't look at cloud first or cloud hosted, look at cloud native which gives you inherently stability, scalability, and the openness to make it part of not just one element, but multiple things that you might be looking at. So again, every industry is disrupted because of this need for digital transformation. And it really, like Mendex in the healthcare, Uber transportation, PayPal, there is not one industry that has not transformed the way we as users conduct business or do transactions. Right? There, you know, I think that very few of us even use, how many of us carry cash around anymore? Right? I mean, so many things are moving quicker than you think into this disruptive world. And this goes into CPaaS. CPA, think about CPaaS representing the disruption in the communication industry. Right? The idea of opening up these closed carrier networks so you can tap into them to build any type of engagement service that you're looking for opening up not just the carrier network, opening up the communication network, because that means opening up Google's network, Amazon's network, all the carriers, so you can build or provide a service that interoperates that all together to provide what I would call next generation engagement services. All right, so it's all about open APIs, right? The benefactors, the customer, ultimate customization, the partner and the company, right? Me as a company, I can roll out at speed and agility my cloud services that become global instantly with agility and speed. I can then open that up to my partner ecosystem so they can build products on my cloud. They own the, uh, the, the IP on that cloud, but now I can expand into vertical segments without providing engineering resources, right? So the, again, great example, what we did at Avaya, we partnered with Mendex, took our framework and now expanded it specifically for healthcare. Right? We're doing the same thing in retail, same thing in banking. So for example, in healthcare and banking, we are an open cloud native platform. In those instances, you need to have HIPAA compliant environments. So our partner builds everything in a HIPAA compliant data center in a HIPAA compliant cloud that then connects to our cloud to provide or consume the services it needs. Right? In the old days, if I wanted to build a product and now move into the healthcare industry, you're talking about re-engineering everything. 
This gives us the agility, the speed, growth through partners. So customers benefit because they get the applications instantaneously. Partners benefit because now they have the ability not only to sell services, but to build services without having to be architects. And then as organizations, we now have the agility to grow out our portfolio at cloud speed without being dependent on our own organization. So, you know, when I say in the old days, this is like still today, I see this all the time. Organizations, I always laugh because, hey, if you want unified communications, you should look at UCAS. I, saw, I think I saw someone put up a board. And if, and if you want contact center, you're gonna go to a contact center. And if you wanna buy IVR workflow, you go to CPAS. Seems crazy. Three initiatives with three different budgets that are three projects that may never happen properly. All of these are really just one thing. They're all about digital engagement. So what you're going to see, and I'm already seeing it in companies that are harnessing the disruption is, there are no more silos. You gotta look at digital transformation because the way we engage customers, employees, are the same. The experience is key. So it's about consolidating those silos into one grand vision a grand vision of digital engagement. And whether you're engaging a customer, an employee, or a supplier, right? It, it's relatively all the same. How do I deliver a user experience that they want, whether it's on mobile, web, or whatever it may be. So this is transforming to become digital transformation projects, engagement clouds and services, not UCAS, CCAS, and CPAS. No one's asking for CPAS. What they're asking for is solutions end states and that end state's being delivered through innovation. And that innovation comes from this agile cloud service. Right, so new engagements, the way we engage, they're gonna drive massive real-time communications across B2B, B2 enterprise, and B2 consumer. So it touches every element. We're seeing, this is just, I'm gonna flip through the stats, right? So it, digital transformation is happening now. You see it everywhere. Um, and you're seeing all these initiatives in terms of priority, but Again, if you don't embark on the journey, all I can say is danger sign ahead, right? It's going to affect your business. The key here is cloud, AI, and APIs make this innovation possible, right? It's engagement beyond basic communications. You need to figure out, I need to define what engagement is. And the answer is there's no one definition. Engagement means different answers for different companies and different people. How do I address that? It's very complicated. So this is where cloud and the concept of digital transformation becomes very important. It all depends on what that transaction is. Then the, the one thing that I, I do wanna say, I was very, the one disappointment I had is we seem as technologists to completely wipe over this. I've got the story, I've got the, I know what needs to be done, but who am I selling to, you know? As telecom companies, we have this great technology we sell to people that buy phone systems who have absolutely no idea what digital transformation is, right? IT people sell to, let's say, networking people that aren't part of the digital transformation. No one's identified how do we sell the value prop, how do we articulate the value prop to an enterprise or to a business. And the reality is we're seeing this become more and more, especially in enterprises, you've got people assigned to digital transformation. They don't care about phone systems. They don't care about contact center UCAS. It's about transforming the business. These are the stakeholders that we need to work with and we need to influence and promote about how we can help them down around that journey. Right? It's all about connecting the dots. So it's showing a vision of what can be done, not just showing, painting it, and the beauty of cloud is not just painting it, executing it, whether it's a POC or a sample store or location, allowing them to actually use the technology that way they can connect the dots, see the vision, reiterate, execute, reiterate and execute. In the old days, we would say, no, give me $5 million up front, I'll start the project and then we'll see it. No one would embark on that. But today, as vendors, we say, sign up, use it. For In some cases, for free, try it. If it works, great, you've seen value, now execute, expand, reiterate. That's the reality, right? That's the new way of delivering the technology. And when doing that, what we're doing, and this is the important thing, is if we provide that customer journey where before they actually go live, their 100% no addresses their needs and they're satisfied, all we're doing is creating unpaid evangelists on how this can happen. Right, so 
Again, one size does not fit all in API economy, and we see this more and more, right? So you do have this, APIs as a service, the art of the possible, where basically everything's a building block, take any microservice you want, build anything you want from scratch to end state. The reality is that's great, that's really, this was really important for early adopters and early innovation, but as we go and become more and more mature, like I said, disruption is now, this is becoming a big and big segment where it's not the API, it's the app as a service built on API. So it's the app as a service that I can consume, but knowing it has the flexibility to be modified and customized. So if you take the Lego scenario from Lego to Lego set, you're giving direction and roadmap, and this allows someone without that tech technical mindset to really get to market quickly and, more, uh, and in a more agile format. So this whole API and apps as a service is something we believe two, 300% on, and we see value across the board. To the early innovators, because we're not taking away the Lego building blocks, to the, we'll I'll call it main market that wants to get to market quickly. All right, so this, again, I know I'm running out of time, so I'm not gonna go through all these bullets. You, you understand, there's a user, by having apps, there's a user and business benefit, because you can just simply consume it as is, or consume it and modify it to my needs. And from a developer perspective, I don't need to take the black and white, I can build based on my imagination. Right, so from an Avaya, this is where you get the little Avaya pitch, right? Avaya, you know, we have our own group. It's called, uh, I'm part, I run the go-to-market for the Avaya public cloud around our API cloud. And we call it One Cloud CPaaS. Our 100% mandate is on the digital economy. What we say is Avaya cloud powers digital engagement for business. That's our mandate, right? Avaya API Cloud, what we do is we provide you the ability to provide these engagement services as cloud native, pure cloud. It could be on-prem or a hybrid thereof. So organizations that say they want engagement but they don't want to move 100% cloud can layer cloud into their environment. So we said, forget about it. I don't care if it's cloud, not cloud, or hybrid. It's all about digital engagement. That's the mandate from our group. So it's all about powering this digital engagement business. Right, what do we offer? Pure cloud platform as a service, open APIs as a service, right? So developers can expose or consume any service they want. Develop, we, we call it bring your own development platform. You develop in any platform you want and just pick and choose and consume the service that you need. We also offer over the top applications as a service. So instead of just consuming what you need, just take something already done, consume it and modify it. So things like persistent meetings, IVR, recording, conferencing, mass event notification. These are great examples of apps we provide in the cloud that you can just simply sign up and consume. And then the other thing is burstable SIP. What we do is we provide, you know, we partner with uh, SIP carriers around the world and we provide this SIP networking that inherently has APIs. So we have lots of organizations to just use us for SIP connectivity and then right on the network, it has intelligence built in, an IVR, conferencing, in front of their infrastructure, even though they might not be ready to transform over. So um, again, burstable collaboration services, you pay for what you use, you don't buy any products, so it's a 100% it's consumption model, um, or I can take a turnkey cloud service like an app with unlimited uh, customization, so unlimited possibilities through the APIs. And we realize what makes us even stronger is our breadth of integrations with partners. So what we do is, yeah, we're gonna give you this core offering that you can consume. It's all based on an open platform. Believe it or not, we didn't take a VI architecture and put it in a data center. It's written from, again, we talked about the incubation natively, cloud up, it's, it runs in Google Cloud, Amazon, uh, Azure, so different components working in different clouds with a global spectrum, and it's done interoperability and integrated to other clouds, because we know, we. What are we gonna do around CRM? What are we gonna do on data? We're not gonna be the experts in data and data storage and encryption. So we work with other clouds to give our customers and our partners the idea of infinite possibilities on what they could build and what they can deliver. Because again, engagement doesn't mean just voice. We may be the only voice component, but engagement involves things like chat and email and even data sharing, right? So the idea here is speed, agility, and breadth around your digital transformation. Again, inherently because it is cloud first, cloud native, and it runs in these global data centers around the world, we, when you write an app once, you deliver a service once, and instantly it's available in 50 
odd countries around the world to access with local dial-in, local access, right? So global and spectrum. Just a few stats, again, it's only been three years in the making. Our company was acquired. We had, our company had cloud identity, cloud user experience. We did another cloud acquisition. We amalgamated the two together. Within three years, we have 30,000 plus developers registered to our cloud, right? Um, we, believe it or not, we made it a mandate last year. Every Avaya, every Avaya product manager had to consume our APIs. And what that did was it natively embedded cloud, scalable cloud services into even on-premise applications, right? So 30,000 plus developers, out of the 30,000, it's, it's, it's like a 10% rule. There's 3%, there's 3,000 production applications that come flow from that developers. When I mean production apps, they're actually, they've published apps with usage. Um, and that represents 1 billion minutes delivered. And that's, you know, again, voice, SMS, video, MMS, call API calls to carrier services, to partner services. So, and this is a good sampling of, again, over the top applications that have nothing to do with an Avaya call center or an Avaya UC service, right? So owner listens, what do they do? The ability to monitor 800 numbers, both on voice and SMS. So you turn any existing 800 number into an omni-channel uh, application without buying any infrastructure call center. Right, so these are unique, this is you know, recording calls in the cloud, voicemail in the cloud. These are unique developers that created spot applications that have nothing to do with what we call traditional um, deployments. The other thing we did was, again, for those people that want to be able to build simple rapid applications, let's say a bank needs to do something for an 800 number because they released a credit card and they want to embed some type of multimedia. Instead of buying an application, they log in. Instead of writing it from scratch, they can log in. We actually provide a user experience to build rapid applications. In the background, it's compiling the app in Java and hosting in our cloud. So you have zero cost to build and host the application. You just hit publish. So again, if you want to run something for a week or two weeks, instead of going through the headache of setting up servers and data, you can absolutely use our cloud for everything at that point. So the idea is Lego building blocks, Lego building sets, Lego toys. You pick and choose what meets your needs and what you're looking for. So apps and APIs as a service are the building blocks for digital transformation. That's how I feel right now, right? Avaya One Cloud CPaaS enables disruption in organizations to deliver exceptional customer experiences and connects employees, partners, apps, and devices to data anytime, anywhere at the speed of cloud. So if I went fast, not just because of the time, because I wanted you to get a sense of urgency of what this topic is, right? Digital transformation is here. The ability to address it exists. It's all about agile business mindset, not being afraid to trial, execute, reiterate. And that's it. Any other, any questions, any comments? Uh, again, by all means, you go to our cloud and you can um, sign up today for free, right? You sign up for free, you get an access to account, we give you credit. The idea is to use the technology. You use the technology, you prove it out, you feel free, you move forward. That's the key, right? It's not about me taking, it's not about you guys taking the risk of trialing my technology, it's about me taking the risk to deliver it at a level that you feel it meets your needs. I'll take on that risk, that way you're satisfied, and I've delivered that engagement for success. And that's it. Look at, day's over. <laughs>